All right, the last thing for us to do here is to scale up our winners because if I can, you know, if I can make money from 100 clicks, then I want 1,000 clicks or I want 10,000 clicks. All that is left, all that's standing between you and that success is the traffic and the same kind of traffic, which is very important to this. We don't just want to send, you know, a ton of extra traffic. It needs to be the same kind that has been working up to this point. So we're going to talk about some ways to scale up. What actually do you do? With the process here, there is going to be constant tweaking. You're going to be dropping into your campaign, doing some tests, maybe change things on your landing page. Um, nothing, you know, real drastic, just subtle things typically. But just try to get the most out of the system. And that's why it's one of the things I've been trying to hit home here is test, 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 track, track, track. That's what separates, you know, the the really good marketers from the people who want to be really good marketers is the ability to test and track. For your first 30 days of your campaign, you want to watch that thing every two to three days, go in there and be tweaking it. Uh, if there's little things that you can do to just as a test, see if something works better, then you try it in that first 30 days. Again, every couple of days, monitor the campaign so that you know what's going on. You do this for a number of reasons. You don't want things to just all of a sudden, maybe when you ran the test initially and you made money and so you decide to keep it, all of a sudden, boom, it was a fluke and then you just it just dies. Uh, so you want to keep up on that. But you want to also be able to perfect the system because we've kept, according to the rules in the last video, we have kept some campaigns that are not necessarily profitable yet. So we're going to be tweaking them every couple of days. We're going to go in and try to do something to increase performance and then let it go for a couple of days and see what happens. So you keep up on it first 30 days. Then the second 30 days drop in once a week. By the end of the first 30 days, you should have that thing where it's profitable and really performing very well. Uh, and after that, the second 30 days, you're going to just hop in every one, you know, once a week. And then after 60 days, I very rarely go in more than once a month just to check up on things and see if there's anything, you know, that's that's a little bit different. Remember too, you want the same kind of traffic. You want traffic that has proven, like if you were budgeting $500 a day and you were getting a certain amount of clicks, and especially it'd be great if you were actually meeting that budget, because that means one of the key things that you've got standing in your way is just spending more money, which is, that's totally easy to do, especially if you're making money during the whole, you know, the whole process. But you want to make sure that that traffic is the same kind of traffic, not, in other words, whatever you're doing that is working, make sure that you continue down that same avenue, right? Don't try things that are just totally out of nowhere, totally different. That doesn't mean you can't experiment with some new keywords, but just don't do anything, you know, full scale. Always test and take slow little, you know, little steps. But you do want to try more keywords. So expand on your keyword list. But you have to do this, especially during that first 30 days, so that you can try some keywords, see how they're working, see how they're performing, and you're doing the same kind of stuff that we did in the beginning. If there's keywords that are absolutely not converting, then we drop them. Remember, though, you want to put new keywords hopefully in ad groups that you've already got because you've got to have a landing page, remember, for every ad group. Okay, And we're going to find the most profitable keywords. Look for the keywords that don't perform. Look for the keywords that do perform. And by this, remember, we're following it all the way from Google, type somebody typing it in, all the way to them clicking on the order button. We want to know which keywords go from Google, the search engine, all the way to buying. So which keywords are converting? And we focus on those keywords. Obviously, I'm going to be willing to spend more money on keywords that I know historically 
are performing and turning into actual sales. Clicks that don't convert drop. And what that means is somebody types in a keyword, and that's a keyword that you're bidding on, but nobody ever buys when they use that keyword. That means drop it. And there, there's lots of examples of this. For whatever reason, even keyword phrases that seem to be very similar it's really it's really weird. It is. Uh, I've looked at campaigns and I'm like, you know, why does nobody ever buy from that keyword when it is so similar to another keyword that maybe even is performing really, really well? But it's just, I don't know, it's psychological or something. People that are searching for particular keyword phrases, they just don't end up purchasing. So it's really weird, but we don't have to figure it out. All we have to do is log into our campaign. We can see this keyword has sent us, you know, 500 clicks. Nobody ever bought. Nobody ever converted. Drop it. No point in, uh, you know, bidding on that and paying all that money for no reason. Some other things. Consider the content network. This is another way to expand. Some marketers, I'll be honest, are a little scared of the content network. Not me, because you have to know how to play with the content network. Some of the tips there. Start a new campaign that's only for the content network. In other words, you log into your Google AdWords account, start a brand new campaign. You can bring in all your keywords, all the keywords that you've ever found. That's fine. But you're going to turn off the search network for this new campaign. It's only going to be content. And then you're going to bid half of what you're bidding for keywords over on the search network. Okay, the traffic, you are going to get more traffic, you are going to get more exposure, but the traffic generally, I will admit, is not as uh, laser targeted and it's not, uh, it doesn't usually convert as well, okay? But you will get a lot more traffic, you might as well pay less for it since it doesn't convert very well. But those of you that don't know, the content network is if you go to a website and you see ads by Google, that's Google AdSense. Those are sites that have agreed to show Google ads, and they'll get a little bit of money, very little bit, for displaying that ad and having somebody click on it. So if somebody does click on it, the site makes a little bit of money. You, of course, are paying for the clicks. On the content network, somebody could be just, you know, it might be a site that's related to whatever you're selling. Whatever keywords you've bid on, that's going to cause the site to show up or cause your ad to show up on that site. And somebody might go ahead and click on it. You want to make sure you got a separate campaign because it does affect your uh, quality, the conversions, the number of clicks, all that kind of stuff. You don't want content and search in the same campaign because the content network, the ads are going to show like a lot, like thousands and thousands of impressions but not as many people are going to click on it, so it lowers your click-through rate. And the click-through rate is one of the quality factors that Google takes into consideration. So we don't want that warped click-through rate to be affecting our, our search network. Okay, so you separate the two. Also related to that is placement targeting. This is, again, AdSense sites, but... Where, where, it difference, where the difference is is with the content network, you just get free run of all the sites. Okay, Anything that Google, wherever they want to put your site, your ad, essentially, um, especially with the keywords, right? But with placement targeting, it's not keyword targeted. It is site targeted, like even to the very page that you want to be on. So you can say, I want to go on this page, I want my ad to be there. And even if your ad or your product is not relevant, even if you know, keywords do not matter one bit, quality score is not a factor, none of that, you're just picking a site where you want to be displayed and your ad's going to show up there. You can use this technique to even get on your competition's page. You know why? I've seen this before. I think I mentioned it earlier, but the stupidest thing I've ever seen is people that put AdSense on their own like sales page or a squeeze page. Is that not the stupidest thing? Okay, like they might even be paying money on Google to get people to come to their landing page. And then on the landing page, 
They've got AdSense. Hello, I just paid to have somebody come to my site and click on another link and not buy my product. That is ridiculous. Okay, because for AdSense, you do not get near what the people are actually paying. Like on AdSense, you might get like three cents for a click, whereas what you actually pay to get the traffic there might be like 30 cents for the click. So doesn't make any sense. Don't ever do it, but you can get on your competitor site because I've seen a lot of people that actually go out there and do it. Um, another thing to scale up, move over to Yahoo and MSN. Just take your exact same everything from Google, copy it over. The only thing you're going to do differently is for the destination. No, you know, I'm not saying you can actually do like a total copy. They don't have a utility yet that I have found that lets you copy your whole campaign from Google and move it onto Yahoo. But you know what I mean? You take your ads, you take your keywords, all the research that you did, you just move it over to Yahoo, move it over to MSN. Do the same thing there. The only difference is for your destination URL, you are going to set up so that you can track which search engines are giving you the traffic. Remember the identifier thing that we're using? You know, A100 for AdWords. You might do Y100, M100, uh, whatever, so that you can keep track of which search engines are giving you the traffic. A lot of times things are real similar, and generally if it works on Google, it will work on Yahoo and MSN. But that's not a guarantee, and... You definitely want to know. For some reason, there are, you know, the people that use Yahoo and MSN are a little bit different than the people that use Google. So it's not necessarily going to work exactly the same. So it is something that you've got to watch. But uh, believe me, you get like three or four good, successful campaigns going, and you've got them all running on Google, Yahoo, and MSN. You're going to be, you know, you'll have enough to do, but you'll more than likely be making some pretty good money. Okay, next, add email marketing into the equation. And uh, what I'm talking about here is put an opt-in box on your site, on the landing page that you created. Put an opt-in box there so that if people, you know, give them something free, you got to offer them some kind of report or an audio file or something, but give them something in exchange for their email address and their name and then those are people that you already know. You know, I don't have to explain to you the benefits of having your own list. I hope I don't. But just for the sake, I will go through it real quickly. If somebody gives you their name and email address on a site, you know that they're interested in whatever that niche is and whatever that product is. Maybe they're not ready to buy that minute. Maybe they're a little bit skeptical. So if you... Start that you know process of connecting with them and giving them information, helping them out, walking them through, then they're going to be a little bit more open to going ahead and purchasing through you. And especially, maybe they're not interested today. Or maybe they're broke today and they're not going to get paid until Friday. But if every couple of days you send them out an email through your autoresponder, Maybe you'll get them the message on the day that, you know, oh, I got paid today, and they reminded me of this product. I'm going to go check it out. Go ahead and buy it. So you're building your list and also at the same time increasing the amount of sales that you're getting. Because I'll tell you this, when I added this to one of my earlier campaigns, I was getting, I don't remember the exact conversion, but it was about like out of 100 people, I was getting one or two sales. And... That was actually pretty decent, but I wanted to step it up a little bit. So when I added the opt-in, what that gave me was after the fact, after they didn't purchase a couple of days later, an email went out again, and it reminded them about the training that I had given them. You know, I told them I'd give them like four free videos for their name and email address. So they got that. It reminded them about the training, and then a couple of days later, it reminded them again to check out the training. Then a couple of days later, I was like, you know, if they haven't bought by now, I'm going to offer them the training for half price. So that increased my sales because people, you know, a lot of people would buy right away when they come to the site. A lot of people would buy after they opted in and they got a reminder email 
Not everybody, though. And then a lot of people would buy after they got the half-off offer. So I figured by then, I might as well make a little bit of money back, you know, to, so it offsets my ad spend. So that's a good way to do that. Also consider implementing SEO. It's my recommendation that you actually do this with a totally different page, if not a totally different site. But uh, same basic setup, but you want to optimize for those keywords that you're trying to bid on. That way you're going to get some organic, natural results. When people go to Google, they do a search. It's not going to be just your ad that shows up. It's going to be your, or, uh, you know, an organic listing. And if you do, one of the benefits of using the same site but maybe a different page is that for some reason subconsciously if people do a search and they see you show up in the ad section and they see you show up first page in the organic, they're like way more likely to click on one of those two because they see you in both places and they just subconsciously consider you an authority. You must really you know, know what's going on with that particular topic. With this email, though, before I move on with the email marketing, remember, it is always easier to sell again to an existing customer than it is to try to get a new customer. So after the fact, you've got somebody now, if you're building that list, you've got somebody, even if they did buy from you, you know that they're interested and they're going to be more likely to buy from you again, like when you move on to finding another product that's related to that niche. So you've automatically got a list of people that have proven they like the niche and they have proven that they're willing to purchase from you. Uh, so again, easier to sell to them. And that's it for this video. What we're going to talk about next in the last video in this module is things to look for in your AdWords campaign, things to tweak, what to watch for, problems that you might encounter, and how to solve those problems.